In this video, we will examine Iran's Kausar fighter aircraft. We'll explore its development, specifications, and operational capabilities in detail. We'll also analyze why it did not participate in the recent war. This is a factual, objective, and technically grounded military assessment. The Kausar jet was officially unveiled in August 2018. It was designed and built by the Iranian aerospace company HESA. The design is based on the American F-5 Tiger II from the 1970s. The project aimed to modernize Iran's aging fleet of fighters. During the unveiling ceremony, senior military and political officials attended. A production line was showcased at the time for public viewing. However, the actual number of jets produced has remained limited. Official data confirms fewer than 10 units delivered to the Air Force. Kausar is introduced as an advanced training and light attack aircraft. It features both single-seat and twin-seat variants for operational use. The twin-seat version is primarily intended for advanced pilot training. The single-seat version is designed for light defense and support missions. Kausar's engine is the domestically produced OWJ turbojet model. This is a reverse-engineered version of the American J-85 engine. It produces around 22 kilonewtons of thrust with afterburner enabled. This power is acceptable for light tactical missions inside national airspace. The aircraft's top speed reaches around 1,700 kilometers per hour. Its operational range is 1,100 kilometers without external fuel tanks. With drop tanks, it may extend to approximately 1,800 kilometers. Operational ceiling is estimated at around 15,800 meters in altitude. Kausar is equipped with a glass cockpit and multifunction displays. It features a HUD and simplified pilot interface for ease of control. Compared to the F-5, its avionics are significantly modernized. Still, it does not match fourth or fifth generation fighter capabilities. Radar systems in Kausar are either indigenous or reverse engineered. Radar range is approximately 90 kilometers with dual target tracking. Useful for point defense roles, not for deep strike operations. It lacks electronic warfare capabilities and network-centric integration. Kausar's armament includes a 20 millimeter internal cannon and gravity bombs. It can carry up to 3,200 kilograms across seven hardpoints under the wings. It can mount Fater air-to-air -air missiles and other domestic weapons. Its combat payload is limited and mainly suitable for tactical roles. The jet's primary mission is pilot training and light tactical support. It performs well in internal defense, border patrol, or close air support. It is not intended as an interceptor or long-range strike platform. Design and doctrine both reflect its limited operational scope. During the recent 12-day war between Iran and Israel, Kausar was absent. No official reports indicate any deployment of manned fighter jets. Iran relied primarily on ballistic missiles and unmanned aerial vehicles. Traditional manned aircraft were not used in the conflict at all. The absence of Kausar stems from both technical and strategic reasons. Its operational range was insufficient for strikes against Israeli territory. In-flight refueling capabilities within Iran's fleet are minimal and difficult. As such, a safe round-trip combat mission was not realistically feasible. Secondly, Kausar is highly vulnerable to Israel's advanced air defenses. It lacks stealth features or active electronic countermeasures on board. If it entered contested airspace, it would likely be intercepted quickly. Its survivability in modern warfare is significantly limited in practice. Strategically, preserving limited assets was another clear consideration. Kausar's small production numbers and training role made it valuable. Iran's military planners preferred using expendable long-range systems. Drones, missiles, and cyber tools were prioritized over conventional aircraft. Mission-wise, Kausar is better suited for internal limited engagements. It can engage lightly armed threats or aid in tactical field operations. In cross-border scenarios, its impact would be negligible or risky. Iran's actual operational doctrine excluded it from major missions. 
Some experts view Kausar more as a symbol of self-reliance. When compared to global fighter jets, it sits on a lower tier. Yet as a stepping stone toward indigenous design, it has value. Its real role must be defined within realistic performance boundaries. The Kausar project shows Iran can rebuild legacy aerospace platforms. It also reinforces domestic pilot training with independent infrastructure. However, developing next-gen aircraft requires broader investments ahead, especially in engine technology, avionics, and aerodynamic design. Today, Iran's main strike capability lies with drones and missiles. Systems like Shahed, Mohajer, and Kaman offer extended reach across the region. They provide precision strikes and risk-free operations across the region. Manned fighters have become secondary in this asymmetric strategy. Kausar's future deployment will also follow similar strategic logic. If faced with nearby threats, it may see limited active use. But for long-range missions, its role will likely remain auxiliary, unless upgraded models with improved systems are introduced. Upgraded variants could feature better engines and radar systems. Electronic warfare enhancements would also increase mission flexibility. However, under current sanctions, upgrades face logistical difficulties. New, fully indigenous designs may eventually replace the Kausara model. As a domestic training platform, Kausar fulfills a valuable mission. But as a deterrent weapon, its performance remains insufficient for now. Iran's strategic deterrence is missile and drone-based at this stage. In that doctrine, Kausar serves a support, not a frontline function. In military evaluations, operational reality outweighs public declarations. Informed audiences understand capability is battlefield proven, not ceremonial. Kausar should be assessed through a lens of technical accuracy. This video aimed to present that level-headed analysis without distortion. Given all data, its absence from war was a logical decision. Iran adopted a more efficient and survivable strike method instead. The long-range zero-casualty doctrine proved more effective strategically. Kausar was neither built for nor required in that kind of mission. Ultimately, Kausar deserves neither hype nor unfair dismissal today. It should be viewed with realistic expectations and contextual judgment. Domestic achievement is meaningful, but not operational dominance yet. Clear assessments reveal capabilities and limitations without emotional bias. If you're interested in more analyses of Iranian military systems, stay tuned. Upcoming episodes will review Saike, Yassin, Fotrus, and Karar platforms. We'll continue offering grounded, independent, and technically accurate insights. Follow the channel for more balanced perspectives on defense developments.